Fall is a great time to experiment with texture and color in your container gardens. While mums and asters can be spectacular and classic in a fall container garden, there are lots of other choices that will last well beyond the first frost. Summer is a time to go crazy with flowering annuals, but fall is a wonderful season to try hardy perennials that will stand up to the cold in your container gardens. Have fun experimenting with color combinations you didn't use in the summer, like purples and oranges mixed with bright greens and deep reds can look stunning. Think of texture by using grasses and interesting leaf textures like fuzzy lamb's ears. I wanna give many thanks to Philip Oliver, Portland Nursery and others for the generous use of their container photos. Throughout this presentation, we will see containers describing a particular element of a fall and winter container. After each photo, the next slide will have the names of the plants used in that container. I will talk about one of the plants that is interesting and shines in that container. In this container, we have the capsicum red onyx, which is a ornamental pepper. That's number one. It's frost tender, and in the absence of winter frost, it can survive several seasons and grow into a shrubby perennial herb. It's also known as the Christmas pepper plant. The objectives today are learn to what to consider when creating a container planting, how to choose what type of container to use, why is potting mix better than garden soil, and the design factors used to create a container planting. Container considerations. So you wanna use appropriate containers for a winter and fall garden that can take the different kinds of weather what kind of potting mix to use, how to plant a container so that all your plants are happy, irrigation, do you water, and do you fertilize? So in this uh, slide, I'd like to talk about the plumbago, which is number two with those bright blue flowers. It's a hardy plant, and it's one of the most versatile ground covers for cold climates and it grows in both sun and shade and most soil types. It blooms in late summer with these deep blue flowers. And then the foliage turns bronze and burgundy red in the fall. It gets about 18 inches high by eight inches. It's an herbaceous perennial, which means that when the first frost comes, it's going to die back to the ground and you can replant, dig it out and replant it in your garden at that time and then find something else in the nursery that you like. The types of container you use in winter is kind of tricky because many pots will break apart if they freeze, but there are some that will hold up to even the most rigid temperatures. Make sure your containers are made of material that withstand freezing and thawing. Ceramics, terracottas, and thin plastics may not survive. Instead, try containers made of fiberglass, metal, thick plastic, stone, concrete, or wood. Throughout the winter, make sure that the drainage holes in the bottom of your container tank are clear and use pot feet to elevate your containers. That way the containers won't freeze to the ground, which can break even the hardiest plant.
potting mix essentials. Good drainage is essential. A good potting mix will be light and fluffy. Never use garden soil in containers. Its very fine texture stops adequate drainage and lacks sufficient air for the roots. It may also bring disease, insects, and weed seeds. Inorganic matter within a potting mix creates pore space, which encourages drainage, res resists compaction, and some examples are perlite, pumice, and vermiculite. Those are those little white dots that you see in potting, potting mix essentials. Organic matter holds water and nutrients, and it can be either peat moss, shredded bark, or aged compost. <clears throat> because of the dynamics of water movement within a container, coarse material under the potting soil in the container will inhibit drainage. There is a handout that will be available at the end of this presentation that describes the physics of water movement in containers. Container depth is important if you're putting a lot of different kinds of plants into a container. So annuals have shallow roots, six inches to eight inches. Perennials require 10 inches to 12 inches. Herbs thrive, thrive in four inches to six inches. And shrubs and trees need at least 12 inches minimum. In this container, uh, the tax is, is like the anchor with that really dark green color. Look at the acorus, which is the yellow grass, and then at the viola, tiger eyes, and the scotch moss. This is a triangle of color from the grass to the scotch moss to the viola. And when you do that successfully in a container, it helps bring order and balance. Heuchera, forever red, is what draws your eye to this container. But having that really dark green taxis behind it gives everything a real glow. Taxis is a U and this one is graceful and it spreads out as a compact habit with dark forest green foliage. It's a superior cultivar that doesn't burn in winter. At maturity, it's gonna be four feet by four feet. It's a slow grower, but at some point, this plant will need to be moved to the ground or to another bigger container. Container diameter. When potting up containers in spring, there are advantages to using fewer plants per container and leaving those plants plenty of room to grow. But fall has a completely different set of circumstances. While you're likely planting your fall containers when the temperatures are still warm, those temperatures are going to quickly begin cooling off. And then as the temperatures cool, plant growth slows or stops completely. This means that plants potted up in the fall aren't going to show the amazing growth that you get from those planted in the spring. So fresh container plantings for fall is when stuffing your pot, your pot full of plant material with little room for growth makes sense. How full the container looks when you plant it is pretty close to how full it will look all fall and winter. And then in March, the roots kind of wake up and you have an opportunity to do your spring and summer containers. In this slide, Coprosma Evening Glow number two is a really interesting plant. It's a small evergreen shrub with yellow variegated leaves, which gradually develop into orange and red in autumn and winter. It's a beautiful foliage plant and it will grow up to five feet by four feet. It's zone nine. So sometimes it just doesn't thrive in our, our zone. We are zone eight in the Metro Portland area and in the Willamette Valley. 
I have several of these in my garden and they really bring a really nice touch of a glowing soft red and orange in the fall and winter. But I've also lost them if we've had a particularly hard winter. So it's just something to be a bit, um, aware of. I have heuchera mahogany in my garden and it has a really nice leathery burgundy look. And I like it. The orange pansies are the one that bring your eye to this container and then tie in the colors of the heuchera mahogany, the ajuga mahogany and the capros caprosma. container design. So you want to use form, texture, and color to create contrast within the container. The forms are mounding, spiked, or trailing. The texture of the leaves can be bold, spiky, smooth, feathery, lacy, velvety. Color with foliage, green, blue, yellow, red, gray, and variegated. And flower color can be monochromatic, analogous, or complementary, which means that monochromatic has shades of the same color all the way in. Analogous, excuse me, colors are next to each other within the color wheel. So you have purple, blue, blue, greenish, and green. Complementary color scheme are those colors in, on the, in the colors um, wheel that are exactly opposite one another. So in here we have purple, which is the exact opposite of this golden yellow. This magenta, which is exact opposite of the lime green. So when you're putting plants together, you can think of these shades and it might give you an idea of who to put next to whom. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the terms thriller, filler, and spiller when you create a container, but they get balance to your container. When you're thinking of a container, think of either a container with a hot color palette, which are the reds, greens, oranges, and yellows, or a container with a cool color palette, which are the pastels. And the pastels usually fade away if they're next to one of those hot colors. You start with a thriller. This is the basis of your container. You want to assemble your designs early enough that the plants have time to acclimate to their new home before the hard freeze. When I'm doing a container, I get my cart, then go up and down the aisles till I find a thriller that I like and I put it in the cart. Then I walk up and down the aisles, finding fillers that will complement the thriller. And then I find a, a spiller at the end, which just kind of finishes up, it off. <clears throat> I sometimes it takes me a while and sometimes the nursery people look at me funny, but that's how I end up with my containers. When you plant your container, you want to have plants that have the same light and moisture requirements. And you want a compact growth habit. You don't want one plant that's really gangly that will cover your other plants that you've put in your container. <clears throat> so fill your container with one third dampened potting mix. Meanwhile, you're soaking your plants and the pots that they came in from the nursery and you put them in a bucket of water and you submerge the pot and the plant until the bubbles stop. And when the bubbles stop, that means that the root and the container, the plant is completely saturated. So you're putting a saturated plant in saturated potting mix and that way the plant can thrive. So do that with all your 
plants, put them in your pot, and then put potting mix around the plants and cover the roots and up to the crown. But do not tamp down because you don't want to destroy the air and the water pours. Then you water well until the water drips out from the bottom. The soil, uh, the potting mix may settle. And if it does, then you just add more up. You don't go above one inch of the pot. So in this pot, I want to talk about the Euphorbia blackbird number two. It's an evergreen perennial. It's compact, has a bushy growth habit. It grows to about two feet tall and wide. Its outstanding feature are these exceptionally dark purple velvety foliage. And then in late winter, early spring, it has these flowers that are yellow green, really a great contrast. I have this growing in my yard and I have it next to a lime green container. So it looks really cool. It's, I've planted it in the ground and it's a well-behaved euphorbia in that it doesn't set babies. The pet plant will probably disappear once the plant uh, frost comes. The echinacea will stop blooming after the frost. And you could keep the plant in for the foliage, or you could dig it out and plant it in your garden bed so that you have it for the next year. And then you go to get to go to the nursery and some in that spot. In the fall, you can continue watering your, your garden as you think necessary. In winter, the containers usually need to be checked only monthly, monthly to water to make sure they haven't dried out. When the soil eventually freezes solid, watering is no longer necessary. In this pot, you've got the Carex which is a really neat grass. It's finely textured, has a bronze green leaves, and then they age to electric orange in the cool season, and it's deer and rabbit resistance. So look at the yellow of the Vinca illumination, and then find the yellow in the pansies around at your triangle. And the blue of the sedum um, sebaldii really sets off the yellow. This is a really nice container. Plants grown in containers are more susceptible to winter damage than plants in the ground because the plants don't provide the insulation and protection that the ground does. So if you have containers that have tender or frost um, tender plants, you can move them to a protected area and you can wrap them in the larger containers with blankets or insulation and bubble wrap has worked with me. You wanna stop fertilizing your containers, particularly those that contain perennials about six to eight weeks before the first frost date is predicted for your area. <clears throat> you don't want to encourage new growth. It is too tender, it won't survive the cold temperatures, and could even weaken or kill your plant. So a light freeze is between 29 to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This is when tender plants are killed and other vegetation is not dramatically affected. A moderate freeze is between 25 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Heavy damage to hemp, uh, to tender and semi harder plants. A severe freeze is below 25 degrees Fahrenheit and only the hardy survive. So you can replant your perennials as you needed and it's a nursery opportunity. A 
Another trait to consider is that you want to know the ability of your plants to bloom under shorter daylight. Some plants need longer days to bloom. The short days of fall and early winter can cause those plants to go out of bloom. There are plants that will bloom under shorter day lengths and do not mind at all if the temperatures get a bit frosty. So here we have Euphorbia blackbird again. It's a great container plant. Black Mondo grass and the pansy down here. And when it blooms, it's going to have orange and purple. So that's gonna be a great combination of plants with this chartreuse leaf of the Tradescantia, which is also known as uh, spiderwort. It has these deep purple flowers almost all summer and into winter. Um, and the strappy gold um, chartreuse foliage is evergreen all year round. Sweet Kate is lightly fragrant and can attack, attract butterflies, but not deer. It can grow in sun and part shade. I have this plant growing in the ground and in my containers. And it's just one of those Hardy plants where nothing goes wrong. Sometimes slugs like it, but oh well. So you can change your summer containers to fall and winter containers by just keeping certain elements. And here, we're gonna keep the, this is a curdlin in both of these containers. And so we'll, the, upright orange begonias and the lysimachia with the yellow flowers would be removed over to here where you could have many plants. And I'll talk about these now. So the critalin is number one. Erica fanfare. Erica is the genus that has Kaluna, heaths and heathers in it. But look at the flowers on this plant, African fanfare. It's really cool. And number three is Galtheria, um, and it's called Peppermint Pearl. Peppermint Pearl has white berries. So in a winter container, it's going to look great. Uncinia, the Belinda's vine, is a very nice small grass. It's evergreen and it's red. And in my garden, I have it planted next to a large stone and it looks very cool. Senecio angel wings has velvet leaves and you can't help but touch them. It's just a wonderful plant. It can be tender in our area and many people treat it as an annual. Here's another selection. So in here, we're gonna keep the conifers. Get rid of the annuals and then stuff the container. So the Camus appears is this uh, conifer here. It's a selection of a Hanoki cypress. So it has arch foliage that tapers to points like fronds of a fern. The young foliage is creamy white to gold and the mature inner foliage is light green with bronze yellow. It likes moderate sun and it needs sun protection from winter. And after 10 years of growth, a mature specimen will be two feet tall by four feet. Alana Sara, number three over on the side is a great plant and I've used it in many landscapes when I've designed uh, gardens for clients. It's got great uh, yellow green color. It's going to be five by five. The Hypericum Olivia has these great berries for a fall container. I have one called pumpkin, but Olivia is going to be three by three. And then the uh, dragon's blood. I have this at home and I use it as a ground cover. So this pot is going to give you the opportunity to have plants in your garden bed 
and then go to the nursery and buy more. In fall and winter, it's a great time to look for foliage for color. There are many plants with foliage that is most colorful when the temperatures are cool. Heucheras and most not all, but not all, ornamental grasses are great in fall and winter containers. So here we have a coritolin, which is just like those um, red uh, coritolin we saw in previous slide. This one's called cha-cha. Here's the black euphorbia, blackbird. Look how pretty this heucherella is, brass lanterns. Over here, where the red viola is, that picks up the inner markings of the heucherella, but also the soft uh, red in the blackbird. So coritolin cha-cha develops into bright multicolored apricot to light brown leaves and matures from yellow to green. It's fast growing, got a sturdy root system, and it does well both in containers and in the ground. It would like full sun, but it can tolerate part shade. It's going to be three by three. For the best chance that your plants will survive a cold winter or fall, choose perennials that are rated two zones colder than your area. And remember that in the Portland Metropolitan and Willamette Valley area, we are zone eight. So you could look at plants that are zone six and zone seven to have a successful container. So the Carex Red Rooster I have in my garden and it's really cool because it has bronze uh, foliage and the very tips of the foliage then circle in, into spirals. The adobe orange picks up all these colors, but eventually it's going to stop blooming when the frost comes. So you can remove the plant and plant something else. The uh, dryopteris is a really neat fern because the new foliage that comes out is brilliant russet red. It likes warm summers. Um, it's happy in a woodland garden and will eventually be, it's an evergreen plant, will be two feet tall and two feet wide. This heuchera obsidian is very cool, but there's a sport off of it called Midnight Rose that I have in my garden. And so it has the black leaves of obsidian. And then it looks like someone has dipped a paintbrush into a, a paint container of pink paint and then spattered these leaves with pink paint. It's really cool. The sedums do well in containers. And the photo on the left is a container garden that I've had about eight years now that I planted it up. And it's gone through the heat dome, the ice storm, snow, non-watering. And it survived all this time. The only thing I do for it is I water it monthly during the spring and summer. This is Leah's container and it's a um, uh, sedum container. She uh, added this frilly heuchera for the fall and put in a art. Art in a container is always wonderful. And this is a grass called Ogon that we saw earlier in a container. This really cool plan is called Helichrysum Silver Stitch. It's also known as the curry plant. It will grow to about 12 inches by 24 inches. It's drought tolerant, like sun, and has yellow flowers. And the neat thing, it's zone seven. Portland Nursery did a Halloween container with black, silver, white, even black violas, and a little bit of green. So in this container, you have the silver leaves in the heuchera, black mondo grass, dusty miller with, um, that has silver in it, black viola, a white pumpkin, 
But what I want to talk about is Karokia number one. Karokia is a wildly architectural shrub and has twisted zigzagging stems. It grows to five feet tall and three feet wide in seven years. It likes average to enriched soil. It can take sun or part shade. It flowers more in the sun. It's a great container plant, but at some point, you're going to have to remove it and plant it in the ground because it just gets too big. Another neat thing about Karokia, it's cold hardy to five degrees Fahrenheit or lower for brief times. There are hardy annuals that do well past the first frost. Your cabbage and kale, annual grasses, annual um, osteosperum, African daisy, calendula, which is a, looks like uh, marigolds. So the aster and will last um, until the frost. And then you can leave it in for the foliage or dig it out and put it into your uh, ornamental garden bed. And the purple uh, kale at some point isn't going to look very well. So you could put in a purple cucra and still get the same effect. This Liberia, which is number three, is a new plant that I'm aware of now. It's got this great foliage color. It's a low tuft, grassy, the green leaves with the yellow stripes down the center. It has white flowers at the very tips in mid spring to summer. It's great in borders or containers. And it's evergreen. Its um, size is 18 inches by 24 inches. The Lakothi in the back of the Liberdia is a great foliage plant. Um, I've had it in my garden and nothing hurts it. It's just, it has wonderful color. Um, it is going to be three feet by three feet. So you get to move that one too. Hardy plants for winter use. Dogwoods, Japan, holly, yucca. Pyrus japonica, the common name is Andromeda, boxwood. So in this container, we have Karokia. Look how nice that Karokia is when you can see it more of it. Camus Pyrus lutea, which is a wonderful plant. It's kind of a moundy shape. It uh, gets, let's see, how tall does it get? Oops. I forget. Anyway, um, then the blood rain stained sorrel is an herbaceous um, perennial. And when it dies back, then you can put it in your garden. This Nandina obsession is beautiful new growth, but it's going to be about three by three. The Abies is going to be <laughs> tall at some point. I think it gets to 20 feet when it's mature. So this is the container where it looks really cool now, but at some point you're going to need to remove almost all the flowers and start over. Great. So I was talking to my friend Leah that I really needed some container photos that showed fall into a holiday season. And she said, Laura, I can do this for you. So in her container on the front porch, she replaced the yellow Lysimachia with a uh, Galtheria, which is that wintergreen plant. She changed out the um, orange viola with white viola. She took out the dark leaf capsicum down in the corner and replaced it with uh, this Wilma Goldcrest cypress. She added red twig dogwoods. And she also added this really cool plant called um, hernia, herniaria, which is a seafoam 
and the red ball. It's, and then she decided, you know, I need to have more fun. She added lights. She added snowberries from her bushes. She added art. <laughs> she had a good time. So fresh cut boughs are really cool. And you can find many things in your garden and just stick them in. A few pine cones and berries added to the boughs are all you need for a stunning winter container. And it lasts till spring. This is a container I do every year on my porch. And uh, this is called Mr. Happy Face. So when it comes to design, try a mix of light, plants, cut branches, colorful berries, and interesting evergreen foliage to dress up your pots for maximum seasonal appeal. Thank you. Here are containers, um, handouts and attachments for your use. Laura. Hi, Sherry. Hi there. Great presentation. Thank you. Lovely pictures. Thank you. I'm really grateful to everyone that sent me their photos. <laughs> so we have a few questions. Uh, one is, can I plant spring bulbs underneath the plants I'm putting in for my fall and winter container? You can. When you plant spring bulbs, you have to remember how big those bul uh, bulbs are and how deep the roots are of the plants you're putting on top of them. So usually you can decide whether it's a really big, like a um, maybe a daffodil bulb or a tulip bulb or a little tiny bulb. That might be one of those wildflowers that you see. So if you're going to take the plants out in the spring, then the spring bulbs can shine. You just have to think through the whole season about both winter and fall into spring so that your spring bulbs will be able to come up through the mass of plantings that you have on top of them. Okay, that sounds good. Um, we have another question. Will pansies and violas last the winter? Absolutely. They're great. They will last all year. In fact, I asked the nursery once, can I have some winter pansies? And he, she said, I'm there. I'm at this particular nursery a lot. And she said, Laura, they're all winter hardy. Oh, okay. So they, as long as they get fertilized and watered during the summer months, those pansies and violas will last a long time. Okay, and um, let's see, what else did we have here? When is it best to plant your fall and winter containers? I do it when I get bored looking at my, <laughs> my summer containers. That's probably not a good scientific reason, but and then I, I also watch the nurseries to see what kind of winter winter plants that they're getting in the fall and winter. Uh, that's when the cyclamen comes in, a lot of the um, dark mums and asters that you can use, knowing that you'll have to replace them at some time. And so anytime that uh, you want to, actually, there's no kind of uh, dried rule. Just remember that you probably want to take out anything in your container that's not going to last the winter or fall so that you can, they because they're just not pretty when they die. They die ugly. Okay, so at this point, it's still not too late to go ahead and put together a container. Right, in our area, we haven't really had that first hard frost. Usually, um, it's usually October, mid-October when we get our first frost, but it's kind of late this year, so you still have the opportunity to start putting things in. 
We have one question here to, from somebody who's new to the area, and they want to know if there's good places where she can find planters. I think they're just about everywhere if yeah. you just look. <laughs> and the great thing is they're on sale. Yes, because it's now wintertime and people don't plant in the winter. Yeah, I noticed Al's Nursery and where I live, they've, they've had their containers on sale since about August, September. So you can get great deals. Here's another question. This is of an individual who's new to gardening in containers and she finds that somebody's in there displacing the soil and she wants to know what to do. She put some rocks in um, and they tried to dig out the rocks too. <laughs> ah, so is this a container that you had already or inherited? It sounds like one she already had, and it's just, <laughs> it sounds like a pesky squirrel to me. Ah, oh, I see. Uh-huh, because they can climb, yeah. So it's always good, it's kind of good practice that when you start a new container, you start with fresh potting soil uh, that you can buy in bags from the nurseries. That way you know that there's nothing in there, like slug eggs, that you want to have. Um, and then make sure it's dampened when you start. But remember, in a container, the only thing you put in beside the plants is potting soil. You don't put any other material in because it inhibits the drainage of the soil. And you can read that handout called The Myth of uh, Drainage Soil at the end. That's that okay. you can download. And it explains the physics of water drainage. I did find with some of my containers that if I was going to try to keep the cats out of them, I had to use decent sized rocks or they indeed could dig uh, them out. So those oh, were a I see, I see. You know, I see. All it, kinds it, of it, pretty it. rocks and things can be put over the top of the soil to discourage. I'm not going to say it'll prevent, to discourage critters. <laughs> I, I misunderstood the question. That's a good answer. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, I don't know, let's see. And I think you already covered the types of things that could be used as an insulating material around pots. Is there one that's preferred? Um, I think you talked about blankets and would you use blankets only then if um, it's a little, if it's out of the rain zone, so right. it gets soggy? Right. So, so in, if you have one out in the rain, then would something like bubble wrap be a better insulator? I've used bubble wrap before. The other thing that I've used is uh, foam and just tied it around a pot. That's okay. going to work pretty well. And the plants will stop growing anyway during winter and fall. But you don't want what you don't want is this freezing and thawing. That causes more damage than just the freeze. Where the thawing okay. happens then the pots can crack and the plant roots can get disturbed. Okay, so we are, I don't have any more questions. Let's see, did I write down any? Oh, uh, somebody asked for suggestions on herbs that they might plant mm. for a winter container. I really like red flowering thyme or the lemon thyme because it gives great contrast and it's a good ground cover. It gives another texture feeling for the leaves. Um, if your chives last, I think that those are neat because they kind of give a grassy look. My thought would be if it's growing in the nursery and you want to try it, it's worth a shot. Okay. And that pretty well does it for our time for questions and answers. And so thank you very much. And just to let people know, this is also Laura's birthday. And we <laughs> want to wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>